can see that I'm now making a warmer image by turning this knob. And if I turn it back again, I am going to the center position. And of course I can go to a more cool image if I go in this direction. If I want to reset, I just press and hold. And this is typical for Skyhoy controllers that you can do. If we go in the other direction here, the GM axis, then we um, tint the image between green and I think uh, more reddish color here. And of course we can also reset that. The Lumix BHG1 camera is an artistic universal camera and as such it's not designed for only live production. But we have implemented control of this camera via ethernet connection and from our RCP so you can use it in live production situations. And that's a really unique and um, I would say exclusive integration. We know of no one else who has this integration from a piece of hardware. There exist APIs, so you can do it with the Windows application and so on, but it's designed for something entirely different. So it's a really, really unique thing I'm going to show you today. The feature set of controlling this camera is limited compared to what you are used to if you work with RCPs, because the camera itself is not mainly focused to be a live production camera. But if you fancy bringing it into your live productions, you can do it. So in this video, I'll show you what the RCP from Skyhoy here, the RCP Pro new product, can do with the Lumix camera. The support for BHG1 is found on our Blue Pill platform. So we have written a device called for Blue Pill, which is this little device here. And you need that if you want to apply it on any Skyhoy controller you may know of to date. All our 40 controllers, even though only a limited amount of them are designed for uh, camera control, you can do it via the blue pill. This device has the software inside that will talk to the camera. However, in this demonstration today, we'll focus on the RCP Pro because the RCP Pro is one of the products from Skyhoy that uniquely comes with the option of blue pill inside. So actually this platform is built into the controller and therefore we have a single cable coming out of it into a PoE switch and connected to the camera. So um, in the usual Skyway style, the RCP Pro has power and signals on a single cable. The Lumix camera has power, it has an ethernet cable going into it and it has SDI um, out. Let's look at the features we have. So a RCP from Skyhoy on the Blue Pill flat platform usually have navigation on these keys. The first key is the home key. The home menu is where you have the eight most used settings that you would like to uh, put on your controller. If you go to the other menus, let's just check what is here. In the exposure menu, you have some of the same settings that are also on the home menu, but some additional uh, settings that are only found on the exposure page. If we go to color, same thing. Some of the settings that these encoders will adjust are also on the home screen. So home screen is, is where we have, on the home screen, this is where we have the most used features. It's actually possible in the configuration to overlay your home screen with custom content if you want. And it's also like the button you can press and then you, you get to uh, kind of reset your controller back to, to that state. Let's look at what we have here. And I want to start with adjusting the AB and the GM dimension. So if you look at the, the screen output or the output from the Lumix camera, we have brought up a little um, color matrix uh, coordinate system that will show you the effect of these parameters. So this is really tinting the image. You can see that I'm now making a warmer image by turning this knob. And if I turn it back again, I am going to the center position and of course I can go to a more cool image if I go in this direction. If I want to reset, I just press and hold. And this is typical for Skyhoy controllers that you can do press and hold to bring parameters um, back to their default values. If we go in the other direction here, the GM axis, then we um, tint the image between green and I think uh, more reddish color here. And of course we can also reset that like this. This little um, view on the output from the Lumix camera will disappear as I'm now trying to work with the color temperature. So as you can see on the home screen, we thought, okay, being able to tweak the tinting of the image is important to people having direct access to that. So this is why we have it right there. If we look at the color balance, there is a lot of 
uh, built-in settings for this. Uh, we have auto warm, we have auto cool, we have color temperature here, which notice that gives us access to manual color temperature on the knob just next to. So um, if I go here, you can see this is basically are blocked. We cannot adjust the color temperature on the associated knob, but if I go um, to the color temperature setting here, I am able to do this manually. So as you would expect with many of the cameras you can adjust from Skyhoy controllers, you can get into manual mode and it will have a number of presets that you can also uh, activate. Let's just see what else the Lumix camera has. Uh, in uh, We have a, a, sh a shade white balance setting. We have set white balance, which is uh, something to, you can execute white balance here on this knob. And we have, uh, let me see if we continue a little bit. Uh, we have cloud sky, we have incandescent. Uh, I never made my peace with that word. And uh, auto. So all these things are available here right at your fingertips. We have shutter speed, we have exposure compensation, we have ISO manually set, and then we have auto ISO. So in auto ISO, um, when that is off, it means that I can adjust the, sh the um, ISO speed of the camera. And you can see I'm, I'm changing that right now. So it does affect the uh, brightness of, th of the picture. I wonder how far I can take it, really far. Okay, good. So these settings, uh, of course, they are read back from the camera, so we know exactly um, the value the camera has as we are adjusting it. And uh, let's just find a more, um, well, maybe just leave it here, because then what we could do is to enable auto, and now we should see that the camera automatically finds a, an appropriate uh, ISO speed. So this would enable the button just next to, which is exposure compensation. So in steps of like one third of um, uh, two thirds and um, you know, one full uh, unit, we are able to compensate the automatic exposure that was uh, applied with the ISO auto. And uh, also in the other direction, I can make the picture uh, lighter. The shutter speed over here, as you would expect, you can adjust the shutter speed in um, uh, fractions of a second as you are used to. And I think as I am now in the auto mode, that is probably why we don't see the full effect of that. So uh, if I exit that, then we'll see the shutter speed um, being set right here. If I go to the exposure mode, you'll see our exposure menu. You'll see that I have also a display of the iris and I have an exposure mode up here in the corner, uh, which is We'll get back to that in a moment. Otherwise, the settings in the lower end of the display are the same as we find on the home, home screen, simply because they are so important. And if we then go to the color menu, you'll see kind of the opposite, that on the lower row here, we keep the settings, you know, from the home screen. And then on the lower row, we have additional settings, like to being able to set the autofocus area. And there are a number of um, values available from the camera here for how autofocus is going to work. We also have the autofocus mode, whether you are in autofocus or if you are in manual mode. And you can see if we go to manual mode, this one over here gets blocked because it does not make sense to try and set it since we are out of autofocus mode. Uh, we have manual focus uh, adjust here. We have white balance execute, which is also down here. And then um, what you may have been waiting for is of course iris. So in this case, we have a Lumix lens on the camera. And it means that we can control it using the joystick right here. So you'll see that we are able to adjust the iris value on the joystick. It's actually shown on the display. This is a new invention from Skahoy on the RCP Pro exclusively. A professional, probably the, the most innovative and uh, fancy RCP joystick you can imagine. It has a ring that you can use to adjust master black. That does not apply to this camera. And that would be one of the things we would mention makes this a atypical camera for live production because not having master black, you, you would be used to that on a broadcast camera, but it's not on this one. So there's no parameter associated with the master black ring on the joystick, but you can turn it and uh, usually we also find it here. And then of course you can adjust the iris by <coughs> adjusting the joystick like you see. You can see the change in the, in the image that the iris is changing off the lens that I am uh, having here. And you see it in the display also, the f-stop value of the lens. Yes. 
And finally, on a joystick like this, you can also press it down. And if you associate that with a routing instruction to your video router, that will bring up the correct image of your camera on the screen. So that is if you have multiple RCPs in your shading bay, then pushing the joystick down will um, associate it with the router either with the GPIOs on the backside. We have three channel GPIOs, so you can, you can do a lot of things with those. Or you can actually hook it up over Ethernet with video routers to bring up the correct picture on the screen in front of the, the shading operator. So that's the Iris joystick, and we have just seen that working. Um, we do have a record button right here. So unfortunately, we do not have memory cards in the unit. Otherwise, it would start recording. Uh, we do have panel lock, which is not a Lumix feature. That's a general RCP feature. We can turn that on and off. What is panel lock? It means that you can do all kinds of stuff on the RCP without any effect. And you see all the settings. They have a little lock icon on them as panel lock is enabled. And now I disable it. We are back to normal here. That's all good. It, let's go to the record setting because here you see some of the legacy of the Lumix camera being an artistic universal camera. And in this menu, you can see we are currently in recording mode custom one. This is where we recommend you to be if you want to use it in the way we are doing right here because custom one means that many of these settings that we want to set on an RCP are opened up and available. But if I change this setting, you get away from that. The camera is designed to do um, many other things. And one of them that I wanted to show you is if we go to movie record, then we have a number of creative modes over here. There are things that we can still adjust. In this case, we cannot adjust iris. You see that there's actually a little icon here, which indicates that iris is currently blocked. But if I change the creative mode, it's currently off, then you see different ways the camera can, can operate. So this is the, the legacy of being the artistic camera that we have a Lomo effect, we have bleach by, I don't know what it says. There has to be a full title there. Early bird looks like this Western kind of like theme 1.co. I'm not sure. Cross pros, <laughs> you'll have to guess. But anyway, you see the effect on the output that there are a lot of artistic ways you can work with this camera. And we can set it from the RCP as well. Uh, in these cases. Okay, let's move on and just see what else is uh, is here. Actually, if, uh, if we go past it, we can see that we get to manual mode, we have shutter speed priority mode, aperture priority mode, and then program mode, which are like classic classic Canon modes. And if I go to my, my menus over here, you can see many of the things are now blocked out like shutter speed and exposure mode and, and all these I I am apparently not able to control them when I'm in this um, program mode. And um, let's see some of the others here. Apparently here I can now set shutter speed because I'm in shutter speed priority. So that's available to me. But for the RCP operation you are looking for, it's very likely that you want to go to the custom one mode because this is where it's opened up uh, for us to work with. Um, and just one note to mention here is that when you're in that custom mode, you need to go and set the exposure mode up here to P, A, S, uh, or M, depending, uh, because that's like a local exposure mode that is true when you are in the custom mode. So um, it's like exposure mode inside exposure mode, the way I understand it at least. But those are details, and we will have a document that describes some of those main things you need to remember when you work with the Lumix integration on Skyhoy controllers running on the Blue Pill and Reactor platform uh, in, in this configuration. Thanks for watching this video. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact our sales team. And of course, make sure you follow us on YouTube and social media channels because we are sharing so much content these times about Reactor and Blue Pill, the platform of the future from Skyhoy and the one that really enables us to invent the future of live production control.